Now, let's examine our circuit at time right before zero. Because we assume it has been like this for a quote unquote long time, we can take our inductors and replace them with a short circuit, and we can take our capacitors and replace them with an open circuit. Now, there are still values here that we need to solve for. There is still a voltage across this capacitor, and there still is a current through this inductor, but what they are at the moment, we don't know. And if you remember from the previous slides, we already know the vo voltage across the inductor at this time is zero, and the current through the capacitor is zero, but we need to find these two new unknown quantities. So first, if we want to find the current through the inductor, that's rather straightforward, as this is just a single loop, because there is actually no current flowing through that open side where the capacitor is right now. So the current through the inductor is going to be our 24 volts divided by a total of 12 ohms, because we can combine all of our resistors and find out that it's 2 amps. So when we go into the table later and fill things out, we will say that the current immediately before zero is 2 amps. And our voltage across the capacitor we can find in a similar way because this is actually just a voltage divider if I combine these two elements right here and say that that is a 6 ohm resistor. So we have 24 volts across 6 ohms where the capacitor is across a total of 12. And so we find that 24 times 1 half is 12 volts. And so this will be the voltage across our capacitor at the instant right before zero. And again, these voltages won't, will not, voltages and currents will not go away, and we will have to replace them in our circuit when we look immediately at time after zero to see what happens. Examining our circuit at time zero plus, it has changed dramatically. The switch that was up here has now thrown and closed and has brought our four amp source back into play. Additionally, our capacitor or excuse me, our inductor and our capacitor are back, and we need to replace them with equivalent values for the initial conditions that we found. Previously, we found that there was two amps of current flowing through this inductor, and so we will remove the inductor and replace it with a two amp source. Now again, why are we replacing the inductor with a two amp source? We are doing that because the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously, and we know that just at the instant before, there was already two amps flowing through it. This two amps cannot disappear, and so we need to uh, replace it and model that behavior in our circuit. In the same way, the voltage across our capacitor cannot change instantaneously, so we need to remove the capacitor from the circuit and put back in that 12 volt source that models the 12 volts of the, its initial voltage that we had just found. Now, in this time plus zero domain, the two quantities that are unknown at this time are what is the current through that capacitor, and then what is the voltage across that inductor. We already know the uh, voltages across the capacitor and the currents through the inductor at the moment. We now need to find the opposite parameters to see what is going on in the rest of the circuit. To start with, let's try to figure out what the current is through this capacitor, which we now mark as a voltage source. If we zoom in at this node right here, we know that four amps is coming down, two amps is going this way, and if we could only find out the current going this way, we would know what IC is. Luckily for us, if we consider this node right here to be ground, we know that this is then zero volts, and it's directly connected to a 12 volt source right here, so that node right there, that's circled in yellow, must be 12 volts, which means that we must have two amps flowing this way. So if there are six amps flowing in from our top two sources and two amps flowing out, we now know that flowing through this capacitor, which again we are modeling as a voltage source, must be 4 amps. So to help fill out our initial conditions, we'll say that the current 
through the capacitor at time just greater than zero is four amps. Now, to find the voltage across the inductor, it's a little bit trickier, and partially it's my fault because I've said, oh, don't ever ask what the voltage is across a current source. But there is a voltage across this current source, we just don't know what it is yet. We can't assume it. But luckily for us, we can write a loop here because we know most of all the currents through all these branches. And so if I start in the bottom left down here and say, well, it's negative 24, plus two times I, whatever I happens to be in here, plus four, and thankfully for us, we already know that the current going through this branch is two amps, so I'm just gonna say four times two, plus, and I don't know what the voltage is across that current source, but I'm just gonna write it as VL, and as I continue down the loop, it will be six, and we already know that two amps is flowing through that branch. And all of this adds up and equals to zero. Now, the only thing we're missing is what is this current right here? And thankfully for us, we have a couple current sources and we know that four amps is going this way and two amps is going this way. So that must mean that this current I right here is six. And so I can replace I right here with six, and we have nothing left but our unknown and a bunch of numbers. And so we can find out that the voltage across the inductor at time just greater than zero is actually negative eight volts. So the voltage across that inductor is actually flipped, but we have now found all of our initial conditions for all of our components at time right before and time right after zero. So let's summarize a bit and bring this all back together. Remember, our goal has been to try to fill out this giant table of initial and final conditions for all of the voltages and currents throughout our circuit. Because of our DC assumptions, we know that at time right before zero, both of these quantities here are going to be zero, and especially at time infinity, these are going to be zero. We also know that the values of the current across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. In our first set of solving for our initial conditions, we found that the voltage across the capacitor was 12 volts, and we know that cannot change instantaneously, so it must be 12 volts in this situation as well. We also found that the current through the inductor was two amps, and know that that cannot change instantaneously, so it is two amps as well. We took that 12 volts and those two amps and plugged it into time right after zero and found that the current through our capacitor was four amps and the voltage across our inductor was negative eight volts. Now, all that remains to us are to find out what these values are over here in terms of our final voltage across the capacitor and our final current across the inductor. And we will do that 